We're here today at the fantastic Glebe Complex. I'm on pool two, the sun's back in the sky, temperatures are on the rise and the carp are moving. I'm going to run you through today a lot of the tactics I use to catch lots of fish shallow. The reason why I fish shallow, well once I've been fishing on the bottom, if I start getting too many indications, too many liners, bits of movement, odds tail and swirl patterns around the float, when bait's being fed into the peg, that gives me that little alarm call to say, right, it's time to come right up into the top layers of the water, just that top third where all those fish will be hanging about, congregating, picking all the bits of bait up that are falling through. There's also the odd occasion where you turn up and the carp would already be surface feeding, be it insects, little bits of fluff, odd particles that are still remaining from past sessions, just floating around on the surface. They just all congregated there, just waiting for you when you turn up. But as a general rule of thumb, you would generally work from the bottom right the way through to the top of the surface. My shallow setups are dead simple. That's what, like with all my fishing, I like to keep it dead simple. First, let's have a look at the elastic. It's just a TENS matrix hollow. The reason I use a TENS, I want it to be nice and soft. When I hook a fish, I want to connect with it and just let that fish just gently just cruise away, leave the feeding area, don't just spook any of the other fish. I've got an 016 mainline, power micron, right the way down to a 75mm 014 power micron hook length. A little tiny, 20s bander with a little band tied on the back in a knotless knot fashion. I've got a bulk of 3 8 and the float of choice is a matrix dobber. 0.2 of a gram, cracking little floats these, really strong, they've got an inline body and an eye at the top for extra strength, fantastic for whipping over and the whipping over is a key thing because it's creating a false feed. So that's where that little connector on the end comes into play. If I'm using a normal plastic PTFE connector, I can get wrap overs and all the rest of it. But with a little bit of flexibility in that Dacron connector, it allows me to keep whipping and whipping and whipping, reduces tangles to a bare minimum, hardly get any to be honest. This rig in particular is the rig that I use when the fish are at the most aggressive. I've got quite a long line to the top of the float because I don't really want the pole over the top of the rail, I don't want them spooking off. But that bulk in that position there and the shorter depth will mean that when the pellets are hitting the surface the fish are really aggressive, they're swirling, I'm trying to target that fish literally, the bait will go in, my, my rig will whip over, it will drop through at the same time, crack straight on with the fish. The bulk also is in that position because when a pellet is attached to that band, as I whip over I'll get three contacts on the water all in a line, dink 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 like as if three pellets have gone onto the surface so I've created a false feed. I do that three times in quick succession, I've fed nine pellets to the mines over the fish but nothing's actually gone in except my single pellet just falling through so they charge through, they're thinking that I've continued to feed between six and nine pellets, ping, ping, ping but actually because I've gone quick three times over there's one there, they're charging, they're competing, bang, elastics out let it clear the peg feed and start the process again. The other rig that I use, same float, like I say I like to keep all my fishing dead simple, same elastic, same connector again because I don't want tangles, but this time it's in all out in a strung out fashion. It's nice and balanced, it falls through the water nice and slowly, so I get an equal fall with all the rest of the pellets that are being loose fed. Nice and simple, that's what shallow fishing is. It's akin to margin fishing, it's an aggressive method. When fish are competing and they're really charging through your peg, you can really knock up a weight really quickly. The final rig that I always, well for the last five or six years, it's really come to the fore, is the dobbing rig. Dobbing, that's the name that's been given to a method that's been used by lots of anglers to great success up and down the country over the last few years when they arrive at a peg and it's literally 
loaded with fish. Just skulking around on the surface, you just drop a rig in front of it, of one that you pick out, and then bang, the fish takes it. Lots and lots of big match qualifiers have been won doing this. But what's the best way to do it? I find that using a tiny little Series 2 float in point two, a 75mm hook length once again, a carp bander's hook whipped on with a knotless knot and a boily spike. And the reason I like a boily spike is because I like a nice visual bait and that's what Dobbin's all about. You want a bait that's visual, you drop it in front of an unsuspecting fish, he sees it, he likes it, he takes it straight away. There's a few jo the Dobbin fish in front of me now. The next key part to it is keeping the pole away from them. Be mindful of where the sun is in the sky, the shadow that's being cast on the water from the pole. Because if you bring the pole round in the wrong direction, the shadow will hit the fish first, spook the fish. So you defeated the object, you're trying to creep up on these fish. If you're creeping up again, you need a longer line to your float. I've probably got between four and five foot of line there, right the way down. And at the moment I'm fishing probably six inches deep. So there's a few fish about. I'm just gonna have a look now, see if I can just dob a couple, put an extra section on because a few more a little bit just further out of range. Another key feature and an absolute must really is the old sunglasses. Polaroid sunglasses take the glare off the water and it lets me see all the shadows of the fish that are moving around. Anything that comes into my eye line in any direction I pick up on it straight away. Without these I get all the surface glare miss out on lots of fish so they are a major tool and a great asset to when you're dobbing for fish let's just drop right in front of one now bang there's one there are actually three fish there just swimming through and i've just dropped that little white boiling in front of them and that's the key you see that visual bait i mean you don't have to use a boilie but i just prefer to because i can always leave it in amongst well, I've got all my rigs and if I ever see a dobbin fish coming past I can just quickly pick it up because the boily spike is fully loaded on straight away with that boily I can go out and ping straight in front of an unsuspecting fish and they nail it straight away. It's the visual aspect, you're irritating the fish, you're putting it right in his eye line. It could be bread, it could be corn, but for me it's boilies. As you can see now I'm using a puller kit soft elastics puller kits are a must an absolute must and i've said it many times before that they're a real game changer on the commercial scene they allow us to fish much lighter elastics that let the fish just clear the peg also with this method because you're using such a longer line for fishing shallow you need to be bringing more elastic back into the pole to bring the fish into netting range so again puller kit comes into its own this actually feels like a much better fish and you normally find that with dobbing fish. It's always the old battle cruisers that have seen it all before that are just mulling around on the surface and it's a really effective way of building a weight really quickly. I remember a couple of years back at Viaduct Fishery there's a, a friend of mine adding, adding near something like 300 pound of fish doing this, got himself into another major final. It certainly is a devastating method on any given day. I'm looking out on the lake now as I'm playing this, there's lots more fish moving in. So literally I'll be landing this fish, shipping straight back out, the sum at six metres. And that's the beauty of doing this dobbing method. I could literally land this fish, drop back out again straight away and pick another one up at six metres and I'm bumping a weight up really quick. You've got some fighting in this one to be fair. Here he is, yeah. Angry old ghost. It looks like a ghosty. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Little ghosty. Lovely fish. He couldn't resist that white boiler, that's for sure. Beautiful fish. There we go. Another one that's fallen to Dobbin. And there's lots more out there still. Let's, un let's just unhook this one and get back in.
When your fish push beyond the pole range, the tactic to use is the pellet waggler. Another devastating method when you're fishing shallow. The rod that I use is 11 foot carp master float, rated from three to eight pound with line. The main line I'm using is a six pound with a five pound bottom, short hook length yet again. It's a loaded float and it's stopped off with two float gripper stops. They just let me run the float up and down the line without creating any line damage whatsoever. And I'm going to be using bigger pellets now, I'm going to be using 8 mils because I need to go that little bit further with distance so I want to keep my accuracy and I'm going to be casting into that area hopefully picking up a few fish. The reel that I'm using is a 4000 size Aquas, balances perfectly with a rod, line lays ever so good on these reels, it gives you a nice even accurate cast. The hook, I've gone for a different pattern this time, slightly wider bend, a little bit heavier gauge in the rigger size 14 because I'm going to be fishing an 8mm pellet. Let's cast this one in, see if we can pick up a fish just as moved off that pole line. It's simply a case of putting an 8mm on, so we'll grab the banding tool, put the band on, cracking little tools these, gone are the days when we used to have a band left on holding all the needles together, no bands needed anymore. You just get your 8mm, pick out a nice one, I'll try and find one that's slightly longer, just slide it in and just transfer that band to the pellet. Dead simple, dead quick, no more fiddling about, and twisting and turning, trying to get a band on, it all goes on nice and neat. There's already a few fish milling about that have backed off from that pole line. You know, cast the pellet waggler in, and I fancy us to have a few on this method. Simply get yourself four, four five pellets. You always feed before you're gonna cast. I'll give them a couple of pouches because we haven't fed them for a while. There's little signs of fish there. Just ping over. Ducks are interested anyway. And then you cast. <laughs> There's one straight away. Such aggressive takes. There were lots of fish competing with it about. He's heading for them snags to be honest. Just get a turn on him. That's got him. But as soon as those pellets were touching the water, there was fish turning, moving, going over the top of the feed. The waggler crashes down, there's a splash, which is like a false feed. More pellets travelling through with the other pellets, whether the free offerings. One comes in, bang, they drag the rod. Very often you need to strike. It pays to strike, watch the float, but lots of the times the rod just gets dragged straight round. Didn't even get a chance to just feed. Normally I feed a few if I don't get a bite. Just a little bit shorter of the float just to give myself a second bite of the cherry really so that I can drag the float back into another area of feed just a little bit shorter so I get two chances. But I never leave that waggler in very long anyway. You're talking 30 seconds to a minute, any more than that really and then you want to be casting because you want to get a rep repetition of the waggler it's in the water, your pellets, all becomes, it all builds up, you get yourself a nice rhythm, which is the same as any sort of shallow fishing really. Once you get into a rhythm, it all becomes so natural. And you're constantly casting, feeding, casting, feeding, casting, landing fish. When you're playing a fish, you want to feed. Just build the swim up, keep everyone all confident, so that when you're casting again, there's another one waiting. In addition to pellet waggler fishing, also the bagging waggler can be a devastating method when you're shallow fishing with a rod and line. I'll get this one in the net and I'll talk you through it. When most anglers hear the word bagging waggler, they think about a piece of balsa, sometimes 12 in, 10, 12 inches long, and a great big metal cage underneath that you'd be throwing right into the middle of a lake. Matrix have taken that a little bit further and the team have decided that they can refine that method and use it in everyday commercial fishing. And what we've done is on an interchangeable system so you'd simply now I'd wind off my pellet waggler like so. Remove the weights, the little shims and that's the first part of the micro 
bagging waggler. What you do then, you take this little cage, which is the feeder part, attach that to the bottom of the float, then put it all back onto the thread, and just nice and easy, just wind it all back together. That's now ready to be loaded with pellets, ground bait, nice free offerings to cast out back to those areas that the pole can't reach. It's a devastating method, it really is. It's a rod dragger, they put, they come in, all the particles are falling, your pellet or your boilie or whatever you're using as a hook bait is falling in amongst them, they're in there competing. They also, because of the ball on the top, you get a nice splash, you don't get any plunge, everything's all in one neat ball, all, all breaking down together, and those fish homing and targeting. Perfect for when you can't get pellets with a catapult or any bait for that matter to that area where you want to be fishing. That's now ready for loading. Dead simple. The cage that's on the float's got four sides. All I like to do is regulate my feed, and that's the beauty of these. They bring a little bit of finesse to it. You can if you want, you'll accept lots and lots of bait. You can really pack it around there. What I like about it is I can fill one, two, three, four segments and cut back feed, put a little bit, if I think oh, they're having a little bit too much, they're getting a little bit too frenzied, I can just fill the one or two panels. What I'll do now, I'll just quickly show you how I like to load it. Just get some pellets, there's some pellets here and a little bit of ground bait just mixed in just to create that little bit of a cloud as it hits the water and then slowly all the pellets start to drift off and break down like they would off a method feeder at the bottom of the lake, it's just happening at the top, you've turned the peg on its head really. Just get the feed, get the bottom end of the float, the feed apart, and just press and just pack in. Nice and simple. Same again. It's just like loading a method feeder but on a float. Nice and simple. Press. Just fill up the compartments. Last one. Just nice dead easy and simple and that's what I'm saying there's quite a lot of feed on there there's enough cloud all that will start to break down if I wanted to I could pack it right out they do accept a lot of bait but that's just enough for what I need let's cast this in and see if we can pick another one up now we're just going to cast that in down she goes See how that ball didn't let it plunge or nothing, it just stayed on top of the surface. Now underneath that pellet that's just falling, we've got all particles breaking off, they're all falling over the top of what's my hook bait. It's all breaking down, there's that little bit of cloud, there's one just swirled the back of it then. There we go. Like I said, this really is a fantastic method, but for me, when it really comes into, it, into its own, is when you're fishing in a situation where you're throwing towards an island, if you've been fishing a method feeder and there's lots of bites, they've got really if gone really iffy, you've picked up lots of fish and they've wised up to what the feeder's doing, you can literally turn your peg upside down and just fish it the same way but from above. So instead of that method feeder breaking down on the bottom and all those particles and then they come in and they nose around your bait, now everything's just lifted up and there's particles everywhere throughout that column of water. You can fill this little micro bagging waggler up, just like you would a method feeder, with some pellets, some ground bait. Regulate your feed, like I said, depending on how many sides of the feeder you want to fill up. You'll cast it over, you'll hit the surface, you'll get the plop as if a feeder's gone in. All those pellets will break down. It won't plunge, as we've seen, because the ball on the top stops it from crashing all the way through. And as it starts to break down, you're then fishing it from the up, up from, like I said, your peg is now switched, it's from the top down, and all those fish that are mulling around and picking all the bits that are wafting up and fanning from the bottom, there they are, your hook bait's in amongst it, particles dropping all around it, and bang, another fish is taken. It just keeps fish ticking over, and it's just another approach to keep fish coming when you think to yourself, well, I've got an island peg, do I throw a feeder, do I throw a waggler? It's a mixture of the two and can be totally devastating.
fantastic day sport we've had today at the Glebe. We've kept shallow fish coming all day just by keep swapping and changing from the various methods that I've showed you. Be it normal shallow fishing, dobbing or pellet waggler. It just shows if you keep chopping and changing and following that fish that keep backing off throughout your peg, you can keep fish coming and get bags like these. I hope these tips have been useful to you and they help you to put more fish in your net throughout the coming season.